<clears throat> Hi, welcome. Today I'm going to talk about literature. I brought some books with me. Look here, books in English and in Danish. And uh, I want to tell you what is a good book. I've just read in my morning paper today that uh, now during the summertime it's the right time to learn to read a lot of fictional literature fictional literature and I have to say I totally disagree why should a man ever waste his time reading fictional literature I don't understand there are two types of books and books is a wonderful thing, it's a core of our culture, it's a way to, uh, to store our culture, to uh, look back, to understand our history, to understand ourselves, to learn anything at all. And when you take one book, it is totally coincident, I took it from the bookshelf, Hans Küng, the German theologian talking about writing about the global ethics for global politics. What an interesting subject. All of us should have an idea about this global ethic for global politics. This is not a fictional literature. It is uh, a literature about theology. That is what you call fact. Uh, literature, literature about traits, about philosophy, about uh, something that can be used. And here you have another book, a Carlyle reader. Carlyle, he was a very interesting English historian who had the view of history that history was made of uh, big men, big personalities of uh, philosophers, of uh, kings, of uh, leaders, of armies, and so on and so forth. He was not a materialistic uh, historian. Materialistic, materialistic historians, they believe that the um, history is driving by the economical materialistic forces, so they focus about economy about trade, about unemployment, about uh, the growth of wealth. Well, if you want to understand history, you need to read historians, both uh, conservative historians focusing on the kings and materialistic uh, historians, someone called them liberal historians, uh, focusing on the economic development and maybe there are many historians that try to unite these two points of view. In here you have another book, sorry it's in Danish, but it is an English book translated to Danish. It is about Europe meets the world. What a very very interesting subject today when UK has just left uh, the European Union. The basic idea of the European Union to unite whole Europe, it has disappeared. No one believes in that anymore. Now EU is just a union of some European countries. Some countries in Europe, they want to join us. You know that, for example, Serbia. Sorry for example, Serbia and Ukraine. But these states, I'm afraid we don't want them to be a part of the European Union. So this is a big discussion about who shall be who shall be members of the European Union. What is Europe? What is the values of Europe, if there are any values? For me personally, I don't believe there is anything like European values. It is just bullshit and American propaganda, because every country in Europe has its own values. Here in Protestant, Lutheran, Denmark, the value is demonism. 
everything is bad, you don't have a free will. That's a basic faith of Martin Luther. And in our constitution, you can write that this is the faith that the Danish state, that means the Danish politicians, they have to um, try to spread around in Denmark and around in the world. This religion is supported by the state that is in our constitution. That is very, very bad. And that is exactly the opposite of the constitution, for example, in Italy, where the state is secular. It has nothing to do with religion. So every religion in Italy has to pay for their own, their own members, has to pay for their own church. Here in Denmark, all taxpayers are forced to pay to the Lutheran church. Even me, as Catholic, I'm forced to pay to the Lutheran church. This is not a real democracy. This is not freedom. Because when you have freedom, you can decide yourself where you want to pay and where you don't want to pay. And personally, I certainly don't want to pay to Lutheranism. For me, that is a kind of demonism, and I'm very much against it. Well, back to the literature. Here we have another wonderful book about Andy Wall. You know, this American icon with his uh, very special paintings and prints and art, films and artworks. This very interesting person, he has said so many interesting things that this whole book is only about quotes about Andy, Andy Warhol. And reading this book makes me much wiser, wiser about this man, about the time where he was living, the country in which he was living, and about art uh, in, uh, in general. And I'm very interested in art. What is art? What is good, bad art? Why are some artworks forgotten, forgotten as soon as they have been produced? And why are other artworks uh, spread all around the world and traded for very, very high prices? And um, why are they being kept for the times to come? They are, uh, they are seen as being, uh, being very, very good, high quality, very interesting artworks. And all artworks, they are just seen as being uh, trash. What is the difference? In the old days, we knew that an artwork, a good artwork, was an artwork that looked like the thing that it was trying to look like. A painting had to look like the person that was painted. If it was a landscape, it had to look like the landscape it was painting, because there was nothing like photography. So painting was a way of learning of learning how persons and how countries, how, how cultures looks like. That's what the painters could portray. But today, photography is quite another business. It's not about, uh, it's not only about showing reality, it's also some kind of artwork in itself. And the same goes for paintings. Paintings is absolutely not about showing reality. Today, paintings is about creating artworks. And you can learn about all this and uh, have a lot of inspiration by reading Andy Warhol. And now I've shown you four non-fictional books. All of these four books I read and they are very, very interesting. I've learned a lot. And now I'll show you a book that has, for me, absolutely no value at all. I don't want to mention the author. It has no meaning. It's, it is a Danish book, but it could just as well be an English book. The title is, That's the way it was. Looks like this. I haven't paid anything for it because I never buy fictional literature. Someone gave it to me, and therefore I have it. 
it is 252 pages and I haven't read it and I'm not going to read it because I'm asking myself what should be the reason for me to write a novel by some person called Marin Utauk. I don't know if it's a he or she from Denmark or where. I don't care because this book is about the fantasy of Marin Utauk. Well, to be honest, I don't give a damn about Marin Utauk's fantasy. What is she thinking? What is she uh, visualizing about? What is she dreaming about? Well, every person in the world, including myself, we have a lot of fantasies. I can just close my eyes and then I can construct a novel. Something is happening and after that comes something else and after that comes something else. Yeah, sure. Maybe this novel will be a good novel if someone reads it. I don't know. But I never read novels. I never read fictional literature. And my advice to you is to do the same. That will maybe save you a lot of time. Because the most interesting thing in this world is reality. The present reality, the uh, past reality, and the reality of the future. And this is the reality of the inside of a mind of some person calling himself an author. How should I care about his fantasies? They have no relevance for me. They have nothing to do with reality. They have nothing to do with what will happen in the future. It is only waste of time. Just like being a drug addict when you uh, are a drug addict, I'm not a drug addict myself, but I'm sure that will um, make your mind go into a dream world and for some hours you will dream a whole lot of things. That is fictional literature driving around in your head and when the drug is used, you're back to your normal state of mind then the story has ended. So the, in reality there is no difference between being a junkie and being a fictional reader. It is just waste of time. And the world today, we need you to do something good. Not to sit in a chair and read, that makes you, uh, your body weak and sick. You have to move around. I know when you're reading facts literature, real literature, you're sitting in your chair too, of course, but you just have to do it because you can't read while you're running. You can't read while you're doing something else. Maybe you can get a sound book. You can hear it in your headphones while you're driving. I don't know. But uh, basically you have to be in a state of reading, also to read facts literature. But facts literature is like medicine for you. You just need to take it. You need to take your vitamin pills. You need to eat healthy food to be a strong and worthful person. This is just waste of time junk. I'm not talking about this special book. I'm talking about all fictional literature. So don't waste your time. Your time has a lot of value because I think you're only going to live once. So take care of yourself and use your time the best way you can to the benefit of yourself and others. Thank you.